The universe, our universe, the one we live in, is boundless and can grow on its own. That would be the ultimate development tool, wouldn't it? Well, we strive to make Antares universe in that likeness. Boundless, expansive, with the only limiting factor being your own imagination. And as of now, unlike before, Antares universe can build itself to a degree. Now I'll demonstrate to you how to ignite new galaxies in this universe. For starters, let's simplify a procedure which is encountered quite frequently, a procedure wherein we need to instantiate an object. Typically in Unity, this entails performing several actions. These would be, of course, creating the object, positioning the object within the in-game world, establishing its lifespan, uh, having it echoed to you. It's also possible to define its transform. Well, let's unite all these into a single container, as they're called. This will be a logical container, a kind of function with functions nested within it. These will be the metaphorical galaxies in our universe, worlds unto themselves. Okay then. Here's how we'll go about it. There's our client master graph. You can see a couple of containers in there already. We'll add explosions to where I'll click with the mouse and these explosions will then instantiate. Here's a nice open work area, so let's build our container. And what do we have to do? Well, we'll drag a container from the hierarchy on the right into our work area. And then we'll quickly look for an object to instantiate. There it is. Now we'll need our explosion. Uh, okay, we'll actually add this uh, a little while later. Now we need a game object get transform function. We'll link these in a relationship. In order to create a container, we'll need at least two logic blocks, which we have right here in front of us now. Let's select these with a bounding box and right-click them. Uh, this is going to bring up the settings window, which you can see right here. Uh, to the right is the move in, in container button, so let's do that. What, we've co what we're confronted with now is a familiar dialog window to save the container as it is a separate and thus easily importable file. By default these are saved in the containers directory of Visio. In here we can create whatever kinds of subdirectories we need. So let's create a game object directory. Our prefab file, which happens to be a container, we'll call create instance and save. There, that wasn't so hard. Now we're going to save the scene in order to save our prefab within it. See, as of now, our prefab can be found in the hierarchy. And there's a new subtree called containers, and inside it we've had game object come into existence. There's the name we gave it to, create instance. There's the container we've created. It's functionally identical to those two blocks to the left of it, but it is a single logic element instead of a whole mess. We don't need those two anymore. So what do we have here? We have a closed box, devoid of entry or exit parameters, or any kind of triggers. We still need to set those up. This is going to be a very straightforward and actually a rather fun process. Look, inside the inspector for our block, we have an open containers graph button. Let's go. What do we have here? Why, well, it's a whole separate graph. There is our code. Yes, that's right, it's source code. This is what object oriented programming looks like, I must remind you. Okay, so we need that trigger. In order to satisfy that need, let's go to containers, workflow, trigger, and we'll select the in trigger. All connected. Now let's give it a meaningful name create. Good enough for government work. 
Yes, let's let's also toss an exit trigger in there. We're gonna call this one done. Nice, eh? Okay, so li let's recap what our mission is here. We wish to instantiate an object, declare its position and rotation, and at the conclusion of that, we want to get our game object and its transform right away. This means we need to input three variables, the declared object, its position, and its rotation. We then want to receive two outputs, the created object and its transform. Well, uh, so let's create those input variables. For this, we'll go to the containers tree again, then workflow and container variables. We'll take the in variable and the second one. Now we need to define the types of these variables. We'll give them names and overall create them is what I'm saying. This one, for example, is going to be our original object. In order to integrate it, all we do is drag the original object connector and link to it. We'll drag it directly onto the logic block and it'll automatically connect in the appropriate way. Now the variable type is object, and you'll note that there is no block link per se. Rather, we just touch that block with a noodly appendage, if you will, to transmogrify it. Now, off to the inspector we go, and in the local variable wizard, the variable name we shall declare. Since it's an input variable, we need to necessarily retain the in slash prefix. The name can be whatever you want, though. Source object is what we'll call this one. And now let's press the add local variable button, which will follow by selecting it for this highlighted block. Awesome. We got our first variable now. There, we need to link to it too. Now we'll give it to that object do block. Okay, so what we have to do next is obtain a position and the rotation. So we take position vector 3 and assign it to our variable. We'll call this position and repeat the move from before. And now with a logical link our variable is ready. And now it's also connected like the other one. What's left is to add rotation. In order to quickly generate this one we'll duplicate this logic block. There's a hotkey to duplicate blocks and that's control D. See how handy that is? And now we'll assign it to a qu quaternion rotation and name it rotation. Quaternion rotation has the obvious XYZ components, which are the axes, and also a W component, which is the amount of rotation about the axis that'll occur. You can probably read up about it if you want. Okay, uh, all connected. Uh, now we'll oversee the creation of a new object. We'll get a transform variable. You'll see there, there was an automatically added cast to logic block determining the operative type. Now we need our two output variables. They're produced much in the same way as the input variables. Here's our out variable block. We'll give the game object type. We can drag the link as before, or there is another method which involves going into the inspector. Let's filter for a game object. Okay, now to name our variable. Let's call it new instance. And now it's been assigned to the block.
There, it's connected. In the same way, we'll make our output transform. Let's duplicate this variable. Type assigned. New instance transform is what we'll call this one. Oh dear, there's a typo there. Ah, no matter. Let's just connect this to our exit trigger. All done. Our very first little galaxy. We must save this. Now let's head back to the main graph. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? Such a neat little package and it's got all those things around it now. That's our input parameter, and that's our output. And here are our out input variables, source object, position, and rotation. Output variables, new instance, and new instance transform. Now the time has come to test our devilish contraption. This graph already has the code set up which will determine where the mouse clicks, so we'll be using that in order to complete our program. It's going to generate a small CGI explosion. Let's grab that link from the Raycast hit get block. We'll move this over for better legibility. And now we'll link it into the rest of the code of our newfangled container block. Now we need to add our object into the graph. We'll grab that explosion object from the hierarchy. A uh, medium one is better, come to think of it. There it is now. Link to our container block and our position variable goes there. As for the rotation, the default setting will do. Now let's take a look at what science has wrought. We've hit play as you saw just now. And there's our Mac walking in place. Bang! Replete with trailing fire and radial smoke. Beautiful. Wherever we click, our explosion occurs. You also note that the Mac is walking where we guide it. That was programmed in as well. Think back to how actions with the mouse cursor cause a CGI thing to flash in the map in games like StarCraft and Conquer. Well, that's precisely what we've programmed here. Yeah, now let's investigate how this looks from the inside. There's our graph, and you can see quite a number of blocks with rapidly flashing magenta outlines. Those are being checked. There's our container, too. See how a whole bunch of blocks became outlined in green as the function was triggered? They remain green as long as it takes for the explosion to clear, which is an extra fact. Our exit parameters are over here. Well, the object self-destructed, so they just vanished. It's of course also worth showing inside our container, which will demonstrate how it works. I should add that the system of being able to see how your code works in real time is a unique feature of Antares universe. See here's a mini-map of the entire graph. None of our competitors have these features. Well, moving on, let's get to that container graph. Here it is. Now to see how the program executes it. Well, it's difficult to see since they flash very briefly. But you may have seen that single frame just now of the blocks being outlined in magenta. And there was again. 
There, you, you must have seen it several times by now. Well, let's stop the simulation. And so, during the course of a few minutes, we created a logic block which has been exported out of the application and can be used now as a standard block in anything else at all you may be programming in the future in Antares. In the next video, you will see how easy and quick it is to save your prefabs for import into another project. Well, I trust you've enjoyed this video and learned some things through it. Remember, watching is only part of it. You should always try what you've learned.